So, hello. This is just a quick video I figured I'd make while I have this on the bench. This, for those of you who do not know, this is a Skrana 455 Rancher. This is the new brother to this, the first one, the 5 Rancher. The main differences between these two saws are this is a Strato saw, which, if I can pop the top code for you guys real quick, means that on or in the air filter, I should say, there's an extra set of ports called Strato ports, which are fresh air ports which inject fresh air into the piston and cylinder, allowing it to run cleaner basically. This also focuses a lot more on exhaust capture than the older versions of the saw. So, see right here? This is your strato port, and down there is your actual regular intake. Right here, there is a cam linkage which connects both of them. That's your regular firefly. This is the strato valve firefly. And there's also a bunch more tubing because this is a saw with a purge valve. These saws are a lot easier to start, especially when very cold, than the, than the 55 ranchers. But these saws can be a lot more picky to tune. They tend to have some issues as they get older, which is why this one's on the bench. The carb has some issues that I have to work through. It's not getting enough fuel on the top end, even with the jets turned out to the point that they're about to fall out, it's still not getting enough fuel. The saw does, however, make 0.2 of a horsepower more, about a core horsepower more than the older version. But the saw weighs 13.2 pounds, while the older version only weighs 11.4 pounds. To me, I'd rather have, I'd rather lose that core horsepower, which in all honesty, very well likely is understated because these saws are extremely powerful. These saws also make a lot more torque than the 455s do. But in my opinion, that's due to the these not having a strato port. The more fuel you're able to get, especially on the low end and very top end, will help you to gain more torque. This is just a very simple mesh filter. These filters are not as good as the 455 air filters, but they last longer. The, this is the original air filter that came on this saw. It just has been cleaned. If you look, there's just one set of intakes for, as there's no straddle parts. And you can't even see it, but there's only one fuel line because the saw only has a fuel line directly into the carburetor. This can cause the saw to be not hard to start, but take four to five poles rather than two or three poles when it's cold versus the 455. 55 Rancher still, despite all that, is one of, if not my favorite saw ever made, especially by Husqvarna. These saws are extremely easy to work on. They pour it up very nicely and they have a lot more power, in my personal opinion. And the 455s ever will have. This is because it is a non clamshell design. This actually has a split crankcase, which means these two halves will split apart and the cylinder lifts straight off with four bolts. Rather than this, this, you have to take this handle off and there's four bolts underneath and the top half of the crankcase which houses half the bearing pockets and the cylinder lifts right off. That's just, this is an easier way to maintain. This is also plastic versus a magnesium crankcase on the 55. This does have a plastic clutch cover, which I do not mind in all honesty. It's lasted plenty long. This saw is 20 years old. Still in great shape plastic recoil, but saws such as the 372 have also have plastic recoil. This does have the magnesium clutch cover, and the one major advantage this has is this has an external chain adjuster, which is right here. It's really tight on this saw, but 
it's right there. Whereas on the 55 ranchers, the chain adjuster is right in here, which just a lot harder to get to. These have a less restrictive muffler. These saws are a little bit lighter than the 55, and that's mainly due to the restrictions that these saws have. They have a spark arrester, but they have an internal baffle, which is why these cylinders or these canisters are cut at an angle rather than just vertically. This has no deflector or anything in it. It's an empty can, basically. This has an internal baffle, internal deflectors, and that's the outlet right there at the top. My personal opinion is these, the 55 Rangers, are much better built. They last much longer. They're easier to work on. This is a professional saw, in my opinion. I've seen plenty of professionals use these. I've seen them ported. I've run ported ones. I've ported them myself. And they just run stronger, soft, and after a port grab because you can do a lot more work to them. The saws can also be had for a very reasonable price. I find a lot of them running for about $150 to $250 in my area. Print, it is older, but all the parts are available either OEM or through suppliers such as Wolf Creek Saw Shop. I'm not paid by them. I do not have any brand affiliation with Wolf Creek Saw Shop. They just are the people who I've gone through in the past to get parts for these saws. And they, Ryan at Wolf Creek is an extremely awesome person to deal with. Super helpful. Has always been there for help when I need it. These saws, you can still get these saws brand new from Husqvarna. They are, I don't know the exact current price, but they are a fair bit more expensive than a used 55, but you're also buying a brand new saw. These saws also go up for sale used for about $200 to $300 I've seen in my area. And in my opinion, it's not worth it. If you can find a blown up one, they're very hard to find parts for. So they go extremely cheap. But they're hard to find parts for. They're hard to work on. And I actually have a card off this one. Or it would be right here. And this right here shows the regular intake valves that front front butterfly you're looking at is the choke and these right here are the actual intake valves you can see it better from the back there's your main intake and this is a strato port this is was the top port i was showing and this was the bottom one that's how the strato ports work and this it's not a carb off of a 55 ranger, but it's very similar. You've got your single valve right there, and then your choke is just right there in line with it. So, these are much simpler to work on. There's less moving parts. These are actually very tricky to work on when you have to. There's a lot more linkages. They're just harder to work on. More parts that can go wrong. And my biggest complaint is the more complex field system due to having a primer bulb. I've seen these primer bulbs go bad, which they're an easy enough fix. You just pop it out. There's two lines connected to it. But those lines connect into one part of the carburetor, which the purge lines plug into that part. or That's the main feed. That's where the purge lines go into. But it just leads to having more parts, more things that can go wrong, and I just personally am not a fan. I get why they put them on. It makes these saws really easy to start, but it's more points of failure. These saws, the saw is the most reliable saw I've ever run. It, no matter what, I've been in negative 20 degree weather, and it still starts within five volts. I've also run it when it's over 100 degrees out, and it still starts three to five bolts and it just i've never had any issues i've never had an issue with this saw that i couldn't fix in the field this one is older so it has all phillips head phillips and flathead fasteners where you can fit both phillips and flathead screws into there are a few 
um, Allens, which are usually three or four millimeter Allen bolts on the internals, but those are parts you wouldn't need to service in the field. And all in all, this is a very simple saw to work on. They both will handle up to a 24 inch bar. The saw, I feel, the 55 Ranger, I just feel personally will pull that bar a lot easier than the 455 because this has a much, much higher torque curve. Everything about this saw has more torque and more power. The 455s, for a modern day 55cc work saw for a homeowner, is perfect. That's the thing, it's only for a homeowner. The 55s you can use in professional environments. I know plenty of people who do, and I personally have used the 55 in a professional environment, and it held up right. The 455s, however, a lot more plastic, they're weaker, they don't have the same power, and they are a little bit heavier. Overall, if you have either of these, I wouldn't rush out and get the other one. But if you have the opportunity to buy a 55 Ranger at a reasonable price, I would highly recommend it. They are one of my, if not my favorite saw ever to run. And it stays with me in the truck in the winter around here. That way, if anything falls in the road, I can clear it. And I trust my life on this saw because it's never let me down. This is my own personal one that I've had wherever. This saw is actually as old as I am, but still runs, still does everything I need it to, and it's still my favorite all-around grab-and-go saw. But that's all I had for today. Thank you guys for listening, and hope you guys stay safe and have fun. Thank you.